إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الله سبحانه وتعالى تلزس إن القرآن أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون Do the people think that they're just going to be left to say we believe and then they're not going to be tried, they're not going to be tested. Ikhwani fillah, the reality of this life is that we are going to face trials, tests, calamities, problems, anxiety, grief, worry, loss. And that's just a part and parcel of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala though, he wants from us to have sabr. He wants us to bear with the calamities of this life and the difficulties of this life with patience. Today I want to mention eight things that when the slave is touched with some adversity, that he can ponder over these things, that he can reflect over these things. That inshallah it will make it easier for us to have sabr when we think about these things. So the first thing to ponder over is that the one who is trying him, the one who is testing him is Allah. And he is the Rabb and the person, he is the slave of Allah. And so the Rabb, he does whatever he wills. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And that he owns all of the creation, that we belong to him. When somebody dies, what do we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Why do we say this? Because we are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the slave is under the control of his master and so this makes a person humble the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was told to say to the people in surah yusuf qul la amliku li nafsi dharran wa la naf'a illa ma sha allah say i don't have the ability i don't have the ability to benefit or to protect myself except with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. The second thing, that the one who is testing us is Allah. And Allah is not questioned about what he does. It's not for the slave to question the master. It's not for the creation to question the creator. لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. Allah says He is not asked or questioned about anything that He does, but they are going to be questioned. The one who does the questioning is Allah, and He's going to question me and you. It's not for me and you to start questioning our Creator Subhanahu wa Taala. Number three. That one of the reasons why لا يسأل عما يفعل That Allah is not questioned about what he does is because whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does he does it with perfect wisdom. So whenever the slave, whenever you are tried and I am tried with loss or anxiety, grief, worry, adversity, calamity then we remember that this is not mere coincidence. This is not just something which is mere play, that there is a wisdom behind it. Even if me and you can't see the wisdom behind this calamity, there is a wisdom behind it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Hakim and He is Al-Alim, Tabaraka wa ta'ala. He is the one who has knowledge of all things 
and he is the one who has perfect wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala number four when the calamities and the difficulties they afflict the slave it wakes him up from a state of heedlessness or it is an expiation for his sins or it is a raising of his rank in Jannah. These are some of the wisdoms that we can see. So, my dear brothers, the first one, it wakes him up from a state of heedlessness. How many a person has been far from Allah, far from the righteous actions, far from the deen of Al-Islam, and then some calamity afflicts him. A loved one dies. And as a result of that, he wakes up from his state of ghafla, from his state of heedlessness. He wakes up from his sleep and he returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many a person is far from Allah and then Allah tries him in his own self, in his own health and something happens. And then he wakes up and he returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many a person is afflicted in his wealth or in his family and as a result of that that calamity brings him back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his sins are expiated that was another wisdom that we just mentioned that whenever you are afflicted with anything anything that you dislike in reality anything that is difficult then it's a means of expiation of your sins the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said that no fatigue or disease, nor sorrow, nor hurt, nor distress befalls a Muslim, even if it's the pricking of a thorn. Even if it's the pricking of a thorn, a minor, a minor dislike that we have. Illa kaffarallahu biha min khataya except that Allah expiates some of his sins by means of that. So whenever you're going through a calamity or a difficulty, then my dear brother, you should, you should be happy because Allah is expiating my sins. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu told us that when Allah wants good for a slave, he hastens to punish him in this world. When Allah wants good for a slave, he hastens on the punishment in this world. Meaning the sins that we do, we repay for them with the calamities that we're going through. Why? So that we don't have to pay for them on that day. Because on that day, there's just the Jannah and there's the Nar. We'd rather go through the calamity here and the difficulty here than go through a time in the hellfire and Yawm Al-Qiyamah. May Allah protect us from that. The third... That I mentioned that if Allah intends a position in Jannah for a slave, but his actions are not enough to get him to that position in Jannah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends calamities upon him, worries and distress and anxiety upon him so that he can raise his rank in Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if Allah intends good for a slave or for, us, for someone, he afflicts him with trials. Meaning if Allah wants good for him, he wants a position for him in Jannah. But Allah knows that the slave's actions are not enough to get him to that position in Jannah. Allah will test him and try him and bring calamities upon him to make up for that shortfall. So that his position in the Jannah, it will be raised. Number five, and this is amazing, Ikhwani Fillah. If we were to reflect on this, Wallahi would make our difficulties easier. That the one who sends the calamities and the difficulties is the same one who sends the blessings, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when the slave is tried with a calamity or a test, he looks on the other hand and he says, yes, Allah has tried me with this. But look how much he has blessed him, blessed me with. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you try to count, if you just sat there and tried to number every blessing of Allah upon you and me, we wouldn't be able to do it, wallahi. We wouldn't be able to do it. The blessing of eyesight, 
This is something that if we worshipped Allah for entire all of our lives, we wouldn't be able to repay our Lord wa Taala just for our eyesight. And so when a slave is tested, he looks just in his own body. He doesn't need to look at everything else that he has. He just looks at his own body, which Allah has blessed him with. And he sees that his creator has been kind and generous to him, tabaraka wa ta'ala. That he may have tested him with X, but he's given him so many other blessings. Number six, that the one who is testing him is Allah. And the one who is testing him does not lie, tabaraka wa ta'ala. When he makes a promise, the promise, inna wa'dallahi haq, that the promise of Allah is true. And the one who is testing him has already told him, la yukallifullahu nafsan illa wus'aha. Allah will not test somebody with more than that they, they can handle. So this thing, this concept that we have today, I'm going to commit suicide because I don't have the ability to bear it. I can't take it anymore. This is a concept which is alien to an Islam. The one who says I'm being tested with more than I can handle right now. Allah is testing me with so much that I can't take it right now. And he has contradicted this ayah of the Quran. Where Allah has plainly told every single one of us. I will only test you with what you have the ability to handle. And I won't test you even one dot more than you can handle. And this is a promise from the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that's why we all have our own tests. Perhaps your test I can't take and perhaps my tests you can't take. Allah is testing us all in accordance with our ability to handle it and to deal with it. And so the slave he holds on to this. He holds on to this. And he says, listen, Allah knows me better than I know myself. He created me. He knows the ins and outs. And he's telling me that he's not going to test me with more than I can handle. Number seven is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust. Is not unjust. Allah does not wrong us, my brothers. Allah does not oppress us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an adl the one who is perfect in his justice. His justice encompasses everything that he does subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَيْسَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he does not be unjust to his slaves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Inna allaha, indeed Allah, surely Allah, la yadlimu nasa shay'a. Allah does not oppress the people in anything, in anything, but the people oppress their own selves. This is our reality. And finally, ikhwani fillah, point number eight, is that the slave, he understands and he knows the great virtue of being patient. That if we understood what the reward is for sabr, for subhanallah, we would be happy when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries us. Because there's a great reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves the people who have patience. Loves the people of patience. You earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ That indeed for the people who have sabr, they're going to receive their reward without any hisab. No accountability. They're just going to have reward upon reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullahu ta'ala, he said, in reality, the occurrence of afflictions are actually a form of blessing. Because they are an expiation for sins which have been committed. And they call a person to have sabr. For which he is rightly and greatly rewarded. Likewise, they cause the person to turn back to Allah in repentance. Being humble and submissive in front of him. Whilst at the same time, turning away from hoping in any of the 
creation. These are the great rewards of having sabr. Ikhwani fillah. Sabr is something which we have to have. Sabr is something which is greatly rewarded. But sabr is something which causes a slave to rise in rank. It causes him to earn the love of Allah. It causes his sins to be expiated. It causes him to turn back to Allah. It causes him to re rely on nobody except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this coronavirus, this pandemic, what's happening of loss, what's happening of loss of our loved ones, what's happening of loss in our community, loss in our livelihood, loss in our, in our anxiety, in the stress levels of our elders especially, all of this, it calls for sabr. But, but Allah will not test us with more than we can handle. And if we are patient, then we will have a great reward. And a musibah, in reality, is anything that's disliked. Anything. Remember the Messenger of Allah? Ham or gham. These types of things. Huzn. This is all loss, worry, sorrow, grief, regret, anxiety, depression. All of these things. If you be patient, you will have a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisail al-muslimin. Astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala. I just want to mention four quotes from the Quran. Four things which will bring us hope if we hold on to them. The first of those is La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wus'aha. The first of those is Allah will not burden a soul with more than it can handle. And we've already looked at this. Whatever issue you're going through, whatever calamity it is, Allah knows that you can take it. That's why He's testing you with it. And so be patient. The next one. Whoever has tawakkul and reliance in Allah, Allah will suffice him. Whatever issue you're going through, turn back to Allah. Rely on Allah. Go back as a slave who is going back to his master. A slave who has run away from his master. A slave who has disgraced himself in front of his master. A slave who has turned away from his master. Go back as a repentant, regretful, reliant, needy slave in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third is the translation of what Allah says, no calamity befalls except by the permission of Allah. And then Allah says, and whoever believes, whoever believes in Allah, then Allah will guide his heart. Whoever believes in Allah, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ Whoever believes in Allah, يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ Allah will guide his heart. So believe with the correct belief. Believe as you should believe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to that which is good. And the final one is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O oh, you who believe, seek help in patience, and in the prayer. Indeed, Allah is with those who are patient. My brother, whatever calamity you are going through, seek assistance and seek help through sabr and in the salah. Have patience and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the salah. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will be with you and he will assist you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease our difficulties, to give us sabr in times of calamity and to reward us for our calamities. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps us safe, our elders and our young ones, our children, our wives, our daughters, our sons, our brothers and our sisters. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he brings us into easier times. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Establish the prayer.